Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I want to show you guys an elegant way of pausing the game in Godot 4. So, with the game started, if I hit escape as I have set as my pause key, then of course the game pauses, you'll see that the pause menu pops up. I can toggle it off again by hitting escape, closing the pause menu. And what you'll notice is that even though the game's paused, everything in the scene is in that paused state. The pause menu itself actually operates when the game is paused, so if I click the resume button, and that'll actually operate. So all of those buttons are working during a pause. So let's exit out of this and take a look at the scripts real quick. So in this current setup, I'm having the pause coming from the gameplay manager. So one thing you've got to note here is that the gameplay manager has its process mode set to always. So this actually allows the node to operate even when the scene tree is paused. So if you click here, you'll see that there's a few different options. The default is inherit, which means basically whatever the parent's setting is, is also going to be this one's. So if I put a child under gameplay manager and made it inherit, then it would be always because the parent, the gameplay manager is set to always. So when this is set to always, it means regardless of whether the scene tree is paused, it'll still operate. And then if we jump into the code for that manager, you'll see that function input event we check if the pause action is pressed, and then we toggle pause, which just means whatever the current value is set to the scene tree, we're going to reverse that. So when you do get tree on any node in Godot, that's gonna be accessing the scene tree. So the scene tree holds every node that's loaded into your current setup of the game in Godot. So whatever affects the scene tree is going to cascade down uh, through the scene tree route to every node that you have added to your current scene. So if we pause it here, then all the other nodes are going to basically respond to that. So with the scene tree as our root of everything that's going on, if we pause that, then all the other nodes are going to look at their process mode and that is going to affect whether they operate or don't operate. So in the gameplay manager, of course, the toggle pause when the action is pressed, I'm just reversing whatever the current pause value is. So if it's paused, it's gonna be unpaused. And if it's not paused, then it's gonna pause. So if I look at my root node, uh, you'll see that in the process tab here, that it's set to inherit. So if everything under it is also inherit, then they're all going to stop their process and input functions while the game is paused as you would want. But you can make exceptions to that, like the gameplay manager. Now, another exception you'll see over here is the pause menu. So when everything else is operating, the pause menu is actually disabled here. If I look down at the process section, then this operates when the scene tree is paused. If I change this to inherit, then you'll see this lights up white because it's uh, actually active right now. But if I put it as when paused, then it is not active and any child nodes that are set to inherit are not active until the scene tree is paused. So that also is pretty self-explanatory as long as you know about process mode, but there is a trick. So how do you have a node which isn't actually running? So its scripts aren't running. How do you trigger it to pop up when the game is not paused yet. As it switches to pause, you want this to become active and you want it to pop up. So if I look into the code here, and this is really the trick, um, there is a function that nodes have called notification. So what here is basically the integer code for the notification. And if you look at the node class, there are a bunch of different notifications that you can run on a node. So this notification function has the advantage that it will run even when it's paused. So other stuff like function process aren't going to run while the node is paused, or in this case, until the game is unpaused, but notification will work. So using the notification, you can match the integer of the notification with the enums from the node class, like notification paused and unpaused, and use that to trigger actions like hiding or showing the menu, which in this case is all I need to do because all the other scripts are, um, if I jump into the pause menu, then you'll see those are actually loaded under here for the save, load, resume button, etc. Those are all their own scripts. So just kind of making everything into their own little component. But the pause menu itself just needs to hide when this node is paused and show when it's unpaused. Now note that that's actually the reverse of what's happening in the scene tree. When the scene tree is running, this is paused and I want it to hide. And when the scene tree is paused, this is actually unpaused, so I want it to show. Because in the process, it should be set to specifically that when paused mode. So that just reverses whatever the paused value of the scene tree is for controlling whether this and its child nodes will be able to operate. And then just remember that any other child node, as long as you keep setting them to inherit, they're all going to inherit from that when paused process mode of the pause menu. And then they won't operate until you actually pause the game and the menu pops up. 
So of course, all that comes together to mean you can toggle the game on and off using the same node because it's always active in that gameplay manager. And the pause menu is not going to be active until it is paused in the game, the scene tree. So I can click the resume button and that's gonna operate as will anything else in this menu because those are all active when the game is paused. And if I toggle escape a few more times, then you'll see that the pause menu with notification can respond and show and hide itself even when it's not active or it is active. So that is one cool trick you can use with notification. And if you take a look at the constants in the node class, then you can see all of these values, what their integer value is um, for triggering those notifications. But I would of course reference the name so that it's really clear when you get an integer 17, what you're actually matching against, like a notification for process, parented, unparented, et cetera. There's a bunch of notifications and you can give them a shot as another way of having things trigger inside of your game without necessarily needing to rely on signals. So that's gonna be it for this video. I've been Chris, thanks for watching to the end 